So a few years back, my sister asked me that how does a calculator functions and how does it know how to solve all the problems? And my instinctive reply, like most of the people was, why do you care? It's math, as if you will understand all this complex stuff. Now, the reason behind my reply was simple. Even I didn't know the answer to her problem. So instead of accepting that I didn't know something and finding out the answer, I just deflected her problem. And now that I reflect back on this, I realize that this is, this is how most of us are brought up. This is how it is encoded in us that math is tough, complicated, complex, difficult to understand. I remember when I was in fourth grade and I got a D in my math exam. I was shocked because in a report card filled with A's, that D outshined everything. Till that class, I never even considered math as a subject of interest, let alone something I would passionately talk about. It didn't scare me, but it annoyed me. I was frustrated because even though I did study for it, I couldn't score in it. And I'm sure many of you can relate to me right now. But then in fifth grade, I changed the way I studied math. Instead of doing just questions after questions after questions, I just polished all of the concepts and did some universal questions. The reason I did this was not because I thought this was a better way of studying. I just did that because of my reluctancy to solve any more questions and because I was bored. Didn't you all ever come across a stage or phase when you were tired or bored or you thought that let's take a risk and try doing things differently this time? Or maybe you reached a point when you just stopped caring. So that's exactly what happened to me. Then it was after a week and it was math class. And I was talking to my friend, as I'm sure you all do. And suddenly my teacher exclaims, Sneha, just because you scored the highest marks in this exam doesn't give you the right to talk in between my class. Now, I was shocked, astonished actually. That overwhelming feeling of surprise and accomplishment flew me to the moon. Now, I'm not saying that marks are everything, but that experience did teach me that math is not about memorizing, but understanding. Since then, I realized that how solving mathematical problems is like listening to music. It's like following a rhythm and being so focused that you cannot miss a single step or beat. Since then, I started seeing how everything around us is a subject formed by lines having different equations, which can be graphed and calculated. Then today I'm here organizer of multiple math competitions, president of the math club, aspiring to pursue mathematics as a major in my future studies. So I don't get this. Why is there such a stigma surrounding mathematics that it is too scary, too nerdy, or the most mind boggling or difficult subject of all these object areas? From a young age, math is considered as a subject which only geniuses or prodigies love. And the rest of the world is just supposed to accept the fact that math is a scary subject. For example, I remember how I was dominated by some of my classmates for the fact that I was giving a talk on math. I mean, I did choose math out of all the subjects to talk about. Tell me, if any one of you or your classmates ever say that today's math class was really interesting and actually enjoyed and learned a lot in it, I am 100% sure that most of you will be like, what is this person talking about? So recently, I started seeing how math plays a significant role in various subject areas. And I came across a really interesting relationship between math and art. Now, I know this is not a very popular combination, but I was so mesmerized by it that I actually started writing a blog on it. I started seeing how, and while writing, I was introduced to a whole new world of wow. Like, did you know that the temple of Jagannath Puri in the state of Odisha has the only architecture in the world where the buildings do not cast any shadow? Or the massive Sudarshan Chakra. The object is pure iron and weighs more than a ton. But how on earth the wheel entered the temple's premises is still a mystery. It even looks the same from every single direction. Just how these questions, in fact, prove that math and art do coexist. One can even say that art is the poetry of mathematics. The golden ratio in a body and nature, geometry in drawing diagrams and shapes and sequences in patterns. 
art and math do exist parallelly. Another example of math and art would be the concept of fractals. It is all about using geometry and using mathematics and measurements to create these amazing artworks. As you can see right here, these artworks wouldn't have been what they seem right now if it weren't for using measurements and using angles and of course these colors to create such beautiful artworks. I'm still interested in this relationship that I'm planning to do much more research in this. And just how I discovered this connection for me, I believe that all of you can see how the subject you like even has a touch of math in it. Even if not now, I can assure you that in the future, math will always be a part of your life. Today, I would like to tell everyone that math has a beauty which is just waiting to be recognized. And as I said before, math is everywhere and it is applic applicable in every profession. And if you accept this and actually give math a chance, trust me, your life will be much easier. Thank you.